watch the deer graze, look that way and you can see Catalina and it's just, everything was out of the garden. You know, no such thing as iceberg lettuce, just all kinds of different, you know, healthy things, real fresh, just picked. And we used to make sun bread out of uh, the acorns here. And we had, and for a while he had a Chinese specialist cook that used to, we'd collect the flowers from ice plant. We'd make a dish. And I only had it once in my life, and it was great. And right here was our, our rose garden. And I uh, used to make uh, rose petal jam. It was just, it tasted just like it smelled. It was so good. Just uh, unbelievable. How about those pools you pointed out down there? Well, he had a grand total of one, two, three, four pools along the canyon. And the floods, even before he died, took out two of them. And the bottom one that I showed you that had the kitty side and stuff, you know, still there. Yeah. And then the one where his ashes are, that's... That that filled up. It wasn't a very big pool, you know, but uh, it uh, it's you saw it was filled up. How about the macadamia nuts? Well, they're just right there. Oh, we used to. It was, it was it was unbelievable. We used to go, and when the peaches and nectarines were just, he had to use two by fours and four by fours to hold up the branches because they were so packed with them. We just, you know, hey, find a squishy one and just just chow down. That's why, to this day, you know, I really can't go into the store and buy them because they pick them so green, you know. They're yeah. not sweet. They're hard. They're, you know, they never get really sweet. What? Yeah. I was so spoiled. And what about those speakers you were telling me about? And the, oh, the, and the misting? Canyon. whole canyon is wired for sound. How many acres was that? This was, in the very beginning, it was 180, and then he sold some off, and plus it was about 150. So how, when did T.O. buy this place? 1959. Wow. Moved up in 1960. Wow. And right there's the persimmon tree that Uncle Jack, before they put the trailers in, he backed up in here and he, could go, he couldn't go any further because of the mud. And the view of Catalina? It was just straight out the front windows of the trailer. You just right from the... Right from the, you know, the chairs and the couches, you could see Catalina. And how about when you, you told me you found the Tio's uh, collection down in the in the in the canyon here? With the... Well, actually, it'd been there for years, and I'd opened it, and you know, it was old Adore milk trucks, and looked at it, it looked like a bunch of junk. And then uh, a neighbor said, "There's a bunch of your grandpa's stuff in there," so I didn't have time to to do it, go through it. So I came back a couple months later, rented a Mexican laborer up uh, Canaan Dune Road, came down here and cleared this one thing all out. And it was most of it was just, you know, old look magazines, life magazines, newspapers, junk. But when I got in the back, in the very back, that's where all the, what's in your home now. <laughs> it's still sitting there. Yep. Gonna go to Loyola at some point. Some point. Yeah, some point. So we're well, we gonna sc scan more of that today, or you, what are you gonna do? No, I, th I think I scanned the heck out of it. I'm gonna take it home so that I can get the right DPI, so I can finish this book. It's just you know, the book's no fun anymore. It's a burden, you know. It's, bad. it's just I can't believe the problems that have cropped up. It's just just sick of it. But I wanted to do it. and I gotta finish it. Cool. So, so I any? Think, I think it'll. I think we'll be able to do it. Any anything else you want to say? If this goes up on uh, with our friends in the jungle and PR and. <laughs> well, I used to bring a lot of people. All my friends have been up here. Everybody. This was was the place I took everybody. You know, he had a crew of Mexicans, about eight of them, keeping this place going. And I just and it was just immaculate, just immaculate. Cool. Uh, and he'd do work. We'd do work sometimes. We'd clear trails. And I remember, still got the bump on my head because uh, uh, the meat bees, the yellow jackets, they put their nests in the dirt, and we stirred some up. Blam! And they just just whacked the heck out of Grandpa and I. And we ran up and found the the nearest. Uh, uh, Comfrey. Comfrey was, you take the, the stem and put it on, break the stem and put the juice on your sting and the pain would just, gone. 
it's gone. It was amazing stuff. And of course, he used to save the leaves and make tea. Yeah, he he had gypsy boots coming up here, and, and anybody from the the health food world back in the day, the lady that Dr. Ann Wigmore, that uh, was the first person to really promote wheatgrass. We were we were drinking wheatgrass back in the '60s, you know, way before anybody ever thought of uh, drinking wheatgrass. Uh, we, you know, it was it was healthy. When I was Very a little cool. kid, though. I was really afraid of the dark, so my cousin he stood down there at the picnic area and he, he let it get dark on me. And so we had to walk back in the dark, and that cured me. <laughs> that cured me. I was okay after that. Well, we can go down and uh, okay. see if we can cross the creek there. All right, let's go back to the hard drives. And uh, see if we can uh, look at that chimney. Sounds good. It's still there.